All right, we're finally on the episode of the whale subjugation. And this time, bro, we actually cleared. It's kind of crazy if you think about it that Subaru and crew, right? Of course, Wilhelm was a giga chat. Of course, our private armies from Kararagi, Krush's people, Krush helping us, everybody clutched. But if you really think about it, if you really think about it, the fact that we were able to kill the white whale, this raid in one run, is amazing. I thought it'd take a couple tries, genuinely. I thought it would take a couple tries, but no, no raid white. We raw dogged it and it was clutched. So what was going on? From the beginning, at the end of the last episode, Wilhelm seemingly died, right? Ricardo seemingly died. Our two most important people are, well, not most, I don't think Ricardo's the most important, but he's definitely important, right? He's like a captain of the private army. It's looking pretty bad. But you know who's out there? Natsuki Subaru. When everyone's team morale is down, Natsuki Subaru's out there encouraging people to not give up. We can still save Wilhelm, and Demon Mode Ram, I think, really helped out a lot, too. In this moment, again, when everyone is so scared, the weakest dude is out there putting it all. And it really probably encourages a lot of people, too. Mimi, Hetaro, they were great. Hetaro's impression of Ricardo was pretty funny. Ricardo also lived. And then Wilhelm survives. Thank fucking God, dude. I could have totally seen him die. I could have totally have seen him die and we're like, oh man, but no, bro. He's alive and he's gonna act favorably for us for the rest out of the season probably too, right? So what's going on with the three whales? Subaru figured it out, right? This guy, not only did he maintain uh, team morale and made sure that Wilhelm was uh, gonna live, he figured out that the white whale, right? The two other white whales that showed up, they're like smaller white whales because the weight of the main one reduced, I think. So it's like the final phase isn't three separate white whales. It's one single white whale, but the other two are just kind of like it's not offsprings, but it kind of like a part of them. And now they're going around while the main one is at the very top, just fucking around. So it's like an illusion. It's not an illusion, but it's a bluff. And it's really, it, it was... It's really easy for us to think that it's over because it's like we're finally at the end of the raid. But oh my god, there's three more whales showed up. Let's just give up. But no, actually, the white whale was also on its last stand. This is a desperation move. And Natsuki Subaru figures it out, man. It's so hype. This feature from Krush. Krush has had many amazing speeches. But you gotta really give it to her, I guess, ability as a true leader to lead people. The whole speech was the shitting on Natsuki Subaru, saying, look at that boy. He's so fucking weak. Look how pathetic he is squirming around. He's so ugly too. But hey, he's still out there. Why are you men getting so down on yourselves when the weakest amongst us is still out there? <laughs> Fantastic speech at the cost of Subaru. But hey, remember? Krush said that her heartstrings were tugged a little bit. And then... I think that Al Huma here launched Subaru, right? I didn't see Subaru here. I don't see him on the ice pillar. I was like, where the fuck did he go? But I think it's pretty much implied that like he wasn't the ice thing. He lands at the top of the white whale. And then he falls off, says that I can return by death trick again. And then boom. Satella shows up, no lipstick this time. And anytime he does this, the witch's stand spikes. Now. There's a very interesting comment that was left in the most recent video saying, I feel the need to correct you, Kaka TV. Subaru's Witch's Miasma does not get stronger with each regression, and it also does not give him powers. Is this correct? Because my interpretation was, with each regression, the Witch's Stench gets worse. And as the Witch's Stench gets worse, what happens then is he's able to see something like the unseen hand or perhaps even be able to counter the mental interference from the whale. It's just false. So that guy was literally just capping. All right, well, we'll have to farm that video guy out too. That dude literally got 10 likes in the comment. The dude literally said, I feel the need to correct you. His witch's miasma does not guess worth with each regression, nor does it, you know, help him get any powers. But... He can literally see Unseen Hand now. Of course, he's not using authority of anything yet. But clearly, the strength in the Witch's Miasma allows him to do different things. And that is indirectly helping him. Like, I... I mean... Hello? It spikes after the table regresses over time. 
So... Let's look at this. Let's look at this. We're gonna we're, we're we're gonna we're gonna cut we're gonna get this. Let's look at this, right? We're gonna do a little bit of a graph here. So, you're telling me? Let's let's look at the lines, right? We got a we got a we got an x-axis. We got a, you got to go y-axis and an x-axis, right? And we have time here, right? Actually, the, the time should be on the x-axis. And we have, right? We have the time here, and we have miasma here, right? Miasma dankness, right? Right, 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 right? We got, we got these two graphs. So what you guys are telling me is, so my understanding of this was, right? Not, not, this just shouldn't be time. This should be more like regression, right? This should be like fucking... Come on. This should be like a... Uh, regressions over time, right? As we regress more and more, right? My understanding of this was like this. Like the witch's miasma will be like... You know what I mean? I thought that with each regression, right? It would get stronger and continue at that magnitude. But what you guys are telling me is... With each regression, right? It spikes, but it goes down. Oh, oh. So this is the, the regression part. This is what's going on. So from the beginning, like, like from the beginning of episode one, you're telling me that he has the same degree of the witch's miasma compared to, let's say right now, when everything is just chilling. Is that true? Mm. See, I thought that again. It just That's interesting. Her. Cuz like I thought that again, it was just I thought that this shit was like this and it was just hold, right? I I thought it would hold every time, but I don't know. My interpretation was this. And every time that he uses the bait, right? Let's say this. Let, these are like his regular regressions. And let's see, right? Regular regressions are here. And then he says, I can return by death. It spikes up, then it falls down. Right? That's what I thought was going on, right? Regression, regression. I can return by death, but it falls down. Hmm. I think that there's a... It seems like there's more endgame content with spoilers on the line that's going to be required to fully understand this part, but... It's looking like this, right? It's, 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 it's looking like, it's looking like this... But maybe it goes like this, and the regression, and it goes like this, it... Are these the regressions, and then is there a new baseline that, that gets increased? Do you know what I'm talking about? So rather than, like, it does, so... I mean, this is... This doesn't disprove my point, though. Because you're telling me with each regression, it still gets stronger. My point is that each regression gets stronger. It is still stronger relative to the baseline. You know what I mean? So, you guys are telling me this. That he has some level of miasma from the beginning. From the beginning, he has some level of miasma. He dies, regress, but then it falls down. And then it comes back like this. As in, this baseline miasma doesn't change. But when he regresses, it does spike and then comes down. Right? That's what the other dudes are telling me. I thought that even if it spikes up and comes down, at least there's going to be a new baseline miasma where the degree of it is stinkier than this. But I don't know, man. I don't know, man. This is, this is getting very interesting, but that's a graph. <laughs> that's, that's a graph. I thought that it would be like an infinite thing that it just keeps getting stacked up and up and up. And like, that's why he was able to see like the unseen hand. That's why he was able to do more, right? Of course, he's not using witch cult powers, but it does look like there's indirect benefit from having a stronger stench. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, that's pretty much it, right? He does the call taunt. The whale gets distracted. Whale gets hit by Al Huma. Gets brought down, 
Rem says thank you for the treat because obviously Subaru is the treat, but Subaru doesn't fucking understand any of this because what does he actually think? Does he understand that she loves him? I don't know. I'm not too sure if Subaru understands that Rem loves him in a romantic way. But he would have to be so dense to not know. He's gotta know. He's just not returning the affection the same way, right? Like, <laughs> it's judged on his actions and his behavior, it makes me think like he's a dense rom-com character. You know? Even if it says, I love you, do you know how many rom-com characters there are where they literally says, I love you? And, <laughs> and, then, they, and then the rom-com character is like, oh, you mean as a friend? The second? Nah, there was never directly. She, like, re at the very end, I think that talking with fucking, what's her name? Krush said, oh, you know, I have a close number one and two in my heart. Obviously, number one is Amelia, but then we memed about how number two could be fucking Patrash. I don't fuck. It's, it's gotta be Rem, but I hope he fucking knows, man. Then we run away, run away, and then this. This is also part of the plan, right? The tree was set up. It's kind of crazy that, like, we aimed it so perfectly. Imagine we fucked this up. And the tree landed somewhere else. It engulfs it. The Flugil's wise man tree just slams the wheel down. As the tree falls down, and then the wind disperses, you see the same flower, right? You see the same flower that we saw from the flashback with Wilhelm and Th Theresia. And I still don't have a good feeling about this tree. <laughs> I, I know Flugel is like a wise man, and this is supposed to be like some sort of like super important landmark. Is someone gonna get mad about this? Is Flugel gonna show up from the heavens and fuck us up? I don't know, but this happens. We get a little bit more parallels of what's going on back in the day with Ryan, uh, sorry, Wilhelm and Theresia. The actions kind of line up. So I guess this is like Sword Saint Ceremony. I'm not completely sure how the Sword Saint Ceremony works, but. It's looking like it's the same Imperial Court. She is, I guess, this uh, uh, been given the title Sword Saint. But if a random dude can show up to this important ceremony, challenge to a duel, and everyone is fine with it, and he wins, it seems like this is purely meritocracy, right? And if you look at this guy here, I'm assuming that this is the previous king of Lugunica. The same family line that got exterminated due to some sort of epidemic that targeted just the royal family line, right? This is the previous king of Lugunica, I'm imagining. And then, the duel. It's just kind of crazy that they just let this happen, right? Because, like, I thought about this last night. Like, are you allowed to just come and do this? No one seems to be stopping them. Maybe they knew who Wilhelm was, so they allowed it. But it seems like the Sword Saint title is, like, you literally can just challenge, and if you win, yeah, you can be the Sword Saint. I don't know. I don't know. But also, after he takes it, remember? It was only taken for a short amount. Right? Wilhelm took the title, but it was for like a short period of time, right? And then she took it back. So, I'm not exactly sure what happened there. We're gonna have to read the actual light novel or you no know, extra videos covering that content. This is so romantic, <laughs> I guess. I shall inherit your reason for taking up the sword, because she never wanted to be the sword saint. But he took it upon himself to become so strong to take that responsibility away. What a giga chad. Wilhelm, the amount of parallels that he has with Subaru is crazy, and that's probably why Wilhelm kind of looks at Subaru in a favorable way. And he never said I love you, right? There's the kiss here, right? He took up the sword to protect her. And will you say, I still want to hear you say something. He never said it. He never fucking said, I love you. And for the, for the sake of content, right? For the sake of content, Wilhelm saying, I love you in episode 21. Yeah, for us, this is an amazing scene. But I had to think about it for a second. And I realized, like, oh my God, this poor girl. She never heard once of him saying, I love you. That is fucked up. But again... It's all for the sake of content. You want to have a very dramatic moment, the build up, the closure to Wilhelm's, you know, vengeance and, you know, giving him, uh, again, the closure that he needed with his wife. And he finally says, I love you. It's just goddamn, bro. 
<laughs> Goddamn. I don't care if she knew. She still wanted to hear it. And he never said, I love you. He never. That's the craziest thing. It's just like, bro. That's gotta be the biggest L husband. I know he means well. Wilhelm is just too much of a fucking tsundere, huh? <laughs> I don't... Is Wilhelm a tsundere? Let me think about it. Oh my god, he is. Wilhelm is the biggest tsundere ever. And he didn't say I love you until she died. <laughs> yeah! And she's all like lovey-dovey and open. And Wilhelm's like, you, you know I like you. Don't make me say it. You're embarrassing me. <laughs> Young Wilhelm. It will help me soon today. <laughs> That's crazy. Sundere Wilhelm never told Theresia, I love you. Oh my god. But if even someone like Wilhelm, right, is quote unquote flawed like that back in the day, do you expect Natsuki Subaru to be the perfect person? Right? He gets the final blow. It is so cool. Like the beginning and the end, right? How did the subjugation start with the entire crew? dispersing and letting Wilhelm solo. That was one of the coolest shit as he rode in right to the middle, running down mid with the land dragon, and the ending, right? Wilhelm shows out of fucking nowhere. The rose petal fluttering, the same flower that Theresia loved, man. It's so dramatic. It's so poetic. I love this shit. The sun is rising. Everything is happy. And he says, I love you. But do you think that she can hear you, bitch? She ain't hearing shit. And then everyone's happy. Wilhelm von Austria has slain the white dragon for 400 years. Four centuries. This thing has been oppressing this kingdom. And now it's gone. Thanks to Wilhelm, the private army of Karadagi, Krush helped out a lot. But who is behind it all? Who? Natsuki Subaru. This 17-year-old neat just made this all happen. And what do you think is going to happen now? He is actually a hero. Rem said, you are my hero in episode 18 to build Subaru up. Now these actions literally have awakened him into a hero. He's going to have his own fucking stories. Like people will glaze this throughout centuries probably, right? Will Subaru be in a fucking textbook? Is he going to be a local legend that this random kid showed up out of nowhere and made all this shit possible? Maybe. I'm not sure, but things are looking so good. And remember how things were so bottom. Uh, we were hitting rock bottom. Things were so depressing. Everything was going bad as Subaru was consumed by his wrath, his pride, his envy, you know, burning bridges with everyone. So bad. But look at this. The exact opposite. We are peaking. Can we get more higher? Krush gives him his her thanks. She says that even if we're enemies, I will see you in the most favorable way. You are the hero who brought down the white whale. This is not a fucking joke, man. This is such a huge monumental moment. It could honestly be a turning point. I think it could be. Natsuki Subaru's ascendance into an actual fucking hero. And again, she says that no matter what, even if we're enemies in the future, you specifically, I will act favorably. You will always be my friend and bro. To have a royal candidate, to have that kind of favor shown to us is fucking crazy. I shall not forget the debt I've incurred this day. And remember what Subaru said to Amelia? Remember how he said, you have a debt you can never fucking pay me back? That was a little bit of a projection, I think, of how he felt indebted to Amelia too in the beginning when she was the, literally the only one that was there to kind of like, quote unquote, save him. This is what happens when he just puts his head down and grinds and he's actually able to you know, go on the positive routes. People like Cruz is saying this shit. I shall not forget the debt I've incurred this day. Fucking amazing, bro. I shall respect and show you favor until the end. Cruz might be one of my favorite royal candidates. I think that the more I think about it, her ability to lead, the way that she gives these inspirational speeches, how diplomatic and reasonable she is, how hot she is as well. <laughs> let's, get that, let's not get twisted, she's very attractive. And she goes into the front lines, right? She doesn't hide behind the scenes, like <laughs> Anastasia or you know Priscilla, who hasn't even show up. She is literally in the fucking front lines. Wow, how inspiring is that? When your leader literally leads with action rather than just hiding behind.
Cruz is such a leader. I would 100% vote for her. And like what? Her entire platform was like, the Dragon Kingdom of Lugunica should no longer be for be the dragon. It should be for the people, man. Fuck the Covenant. I am so down for that shit. Cruz is so good. I hope that like the future of Cruz shit is going to be even more amazing. Now, what are they going to do with the White Whale? Like, we're going to deliver this shit? Is it going to be a feast? Are we going to eat this shit? Is the White Whale a delicacy? Rare materials like the horns, the flesh, the whale blubber. Is there so much like um loot that we can get out of the White Whale? I I'm not sure. Maybe it'll be put in the museum, the skeleton. Just to have a rec uh, like proof that this thing did exist and it you know rained terror over us, but we overcame it. I'm not sure, man. And then, oh my God, Wilhelm, bro. Wilhelm shows up. Natsuki Subarodoro. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, oh my God. Wilhelm getting on one knee. The sunlight, bro. Look at this shit. This is more lighting than Rem saying I love you scenes, man. <laughs> Wilhelm on one knee has more brightness than all the fucking dangers of my heart lighting when the carte shows up. <laughs> no, that's a bit of cat. There's way more lighting there. But look how fantastic this scene is, right? You have Krush, a royal selection candidate saying thank yous. You have Wilhelm, the other, the former sword saint, por like husband of the other sword saint, perhaps the grandfather Reinhardt, on one knee saying thank you as the sun is rising and Natsuki Subaru doesn't know what to do. Probably his like first time, like, I relate to Natsuki Subaru a lot due to how prideful and egotistical and envious he can be and how angry he can be sometimes for sure. But also people like that have a hard time accepting thanks, you know? Like, I think a lot of people that's too harsh in themselves, they have a hard time accepting things when it's just like, it feels kind of weird. I feel like I don't deserve it. Natsuki Subaru, I wonder if he feels like that. Like so many people are going out of the way, not even going out of the way. He deserves it. Subaru deserves this shit, right? I thank you with that all I am. And Subaru doesn't even like realize like, oh my God, like I've had such an impact. I've had such an impact to every one of these people. It's kind of crazy, and it is thanks to Wilhelm that made this all possible. How humble Subaru is right now. It's Isn't it great when we're just... Everything is just going so well, we're not consumed by our sins. And thanks to your service. I think that, um... I think Wilhelm is not going to help us literally go take down the cult members as well, right? You should hold on to that treasure sword for a while, right? I think Wilhelm's gonna be our bodyguard. There's like a half a force of Karadagi army that was, you know, blocking the road. And the rest of the survivors of Krusha's army that's gonna help us out. Go take down the whales. Uh, sorry, the cult members now. Apparently, Rem uh, took a lot of damage. I think that when the tree fell down, someone said that Rem took a lot of the fall damage on behalf of Subaru. That's why she's really injured right now on top of being in demon mode a lot. So Rem is benched for now. She falls on Subaru. My headcanon again is anytime Rem shows a moment of weakness, she's just trying to get a little bit more touchy-touchy with Subaru. I'm not really sure, but hey, remember, we're your hero, Rem. We'll figure it out. And yes, you will be by our side. Very nice scenes with Rem. You know, happy ending. Everything is nice. And she's basically benched now. We always say we're demonically, you know, possessed because obviously that's how it all started. In... The first time when we, uh, in Arc 2, when we went to the village with Rem, like, I think we said, like, we're demonically possessed, and that was such, like, a line because we didn't know that they were an Oni, and they were kind of insecure about their whole Oni uh, existence. My hero is the greatest in the world, and we're not even capping right now either, right? Subaru is truly a hero. Right here, I still think Rem should have tried to, I don't know, sneak in a kiss, but unfortunately, that's, that's not gonna happen. Right? Amazing, amazing lighting all throughout the end of the episode. Look at the bright sky, the rainbows. It's such a triumphant episode. And we have Hetero's gone, Mimi, Ricardo staying. Mimi has another brother, apparently, that has like a monocle. And this group, right? There were half of the private army that was blocking the road that's now coming in. And who do we see, bro? We see Julius. We see my man Julius. And I love him. Julius is an amazing person. He even went out of his way to damage his own career to help out Subaru. Yeah, he fucked him up, but he deserved it. But Julius went out of his way to villainify himself and got punished for it to make himself look bad and take the heat off of Subaru. That's what happened. 
I truly believe that this guy has the best intentions and Subaru, he just needs to talk it out. I hope that we don't just like start fucking everything up and we lose everyone's trust. Like imagine getting this far and like this little fucking mistake just like ruins everything. For sure that's not going to happen, right? Also, where is the checkpoint? That's interesting to think about too. Where is the checkpoint? I hope it's right now. I hope literally the checkpoint is right now. We slayed the whale. Everyone has said a thank you. If this is a checkpoint, it's perfect. If it's not, who knows? Only one way to figure out. And that's this episode of analysis. I think that this episode, my most memorable episodes, I think, have been episode three. Reinhardt versus Elsa was such a monumental scene for me just getting into ReZero. Episode 7 was the only episode that I actually cried, just bawled my tears out. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of teared up for, like, for, you know, Wilhelm in this episode when he said thank you. And I said I love you to his dead wife. That was touching, but I don't think that really counts. That's me just full on bawling and crying. Episode 7 just pierced me through the soul. Episode 15, absolutely. Because that is quite possibly the best anime episode ever, right? People always say that. But also, I think Beto de Giza's moments really was more clutch than that scene. And then episode 20 plus 21, I'm going to put it together. The whale subjugation, you know, the both episodes, 20 and 21, bro, this shit was so fucking good. Those are definitely my most memorable and favorite episodes of ReZero. But hey, we're not even done the season yet, so this list is probably going to change. And I will see you on the next analysis.